on this episode of Weather Watch. We get an exclusive tour of the National Weather Service office in State College, including a rare look inside Central PA's weather radar. Then we unwrap a private sector of forecasting with a look inside one of the largest independent forecasting companies in the world, AccuWeather. Finally, we take a look at a lesser known side of meteorology, weather in space. All that and more coming up in Weather Watch. Hello and welcome to another edition of Weather Watch, Millersville University's exclusive weather news program. I'm your host, Matthew Moore. Let's not waste any time and get caught up on all the weather headlines from the past couple of weeks around the globe. Here's your world's weather in 60 seconds. Deadly flooding in Kenya, a rare tornado in the Netherlands, and heavy spring snowfall in the U.S. highlight this edition of World Weather in 60 seconds. Let's go ahead and throw 60 seconds on the clock and begin. Our first stop is to the African nation of Kenya, where heavy rainfall associated with El Nino has dumped rain for days. Flash flooding near the capital city of Nairobi has led to the deaths of seven hikers and the displacement of more than 7,000 people. Now off to the north to the Netherlands, where a rare tornado was caught on video. The tornado was associated with a nearby thunderstorm, and fortunately did not do any damage. The small European country only averages about two to three tornadoes per year. Our last stop is back to somewhere a little more familiar. The northeast of the United States received a strong late April nor'easter that dumped several inches of snow across large portions of West Virginia, western Pennsylvania, and upstate New York. Up to a foot, and even more in some cases, fell on blooming trees and plants, knocking out power to thousands across much of the region. While nor'easters this time of the year are not unheard of, the magnitude of this storm made headlines across the country. This has been your weather around the world in 60 seconds. The National Weather Service is responsible for the lives of the citizens in our country, while also producing accurate forecasts and outlooks. WeatherWatch was able to get exclusive access inside the National Weather Service office in State College, Pennsylvania, as well as their weather radar. WeatherWatch correspondent Shane Brown has the story. Have you ever wondered where your official National Weather Service forecast, outlooks, and advisories come from? Well, here at the National Weather Service office in State College, Pennsylvania, which covers a broad area in the central part of the state, meteorologists are hard at work creating weather products for the people who live within their forecast area. The National Weather Service is one of six government agencies that make up the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, also known as NOAA. The State College branch is part of a collection of 122 weather forecasting offices located across the United States. These offices are responsible for creating forecasts as well as issuing outlooks, watches, and warnings, among many other responsibilities. The National Weather Service works with local emergency management and media to spread information regarding warnings associated with severe weather and other weather-related events. One of the most important tools available to National Weather Service meteorologists is weather radar imagery. Just a short 20-minute drive to the northwest of State College, and you'll arrive at one of the most crucial pieces of equipment used by both meteorologists and weather buffs alike, the WSR-88D weather radar. WeatherWatch was allowed rare and exclusive access on the grounds and even inside the newly upgraded dual polarization radar, codenamed KCCX. Similar to your microwave ovens at home, weather radar send out microwave radiation. This energy keeps traveling until it comes in contact with particles, droplets, or ice crystals, where it reflects back towards the radar site. Inside the radar dome, the dish rotates on its axis, scanning continuously at different elevations at a range of 250 miles. Once all of these images are stitched together, a complete picture of the state of the atmosphere surrounding the radar site is completed. The newly upgraded dual polarization radar in State College is one of 50 radars to have gone through the upgrade. So what is a dual pole radar, you ask? 
Before answering that, it's important to know how conventional radar works. First, the radar sends out a horizontal pulse, which measures a horizontal diameter of whatever the signal encounters. The energy is then sent back to the radar where the image is produced. However, conventional radar can only measure one dimension of its target, and this is where dual-pole technology comes in. In the upgraded dual-pole weather radars, a horizontal and vertical pulse are sent out and then returned. This can help meteorologists locate areas of hail and severe thunderstorms, pockets of heavy rain that can lead to flash flooding, and help tell the difference between sleet, freezing rain, and snow in winter storms. That's it for this edition of Weather 101. For Weather Watch, I'm student meteorologist Shane Brown. Thank you, Shane. Weather myths have existed for as long as man has walked this earth. But you might be surprised to know that many of these myths and legends simply are not true. It's a good thing that our own myth breakers are here to set the record straight. Check it out. When the lines between weather, fact, and fiction become blurred, we call in the experts, the Myth Breakers. Right down, almost on the ground, it's amazing. We just got a, a, a very upsetting report. It's... Tornado warning, we've got to get to the basement now. Don't worry, we're gonna be fine. I've heard that you can stop a tornado from destroying your home by opening a window. It equalizes the pressure or something. I don't think so. How'd you get in here? That doesn't matter, but what does matter is your misinformation about the weather. Did you really think that opening your window would protect you from the power of a tornado? Well, I, you know... You've probably been told it's the dramatic change in pressure that causes destruction during a tornado. However, in reality, it's the raw power of the wind that you feel before you even experience the change in pressure. Winds in a tornado can exceed 150 miles an hour. It only takes winds of 90 miles per hour to knock a house off its foundation. You guys should get to your basement, or if you don't have one, the innermost room in your house without windows will do. So we should get to the basement. Correct. Our work here is done. Oh yeah, look at that shot. PGA, here I come. Whoa, that sounded close. I better take shelter. I could go back to the car. Nah, too much metal. I could go back to the clubhouse. No, that's too far to walk. Wait a minute, I know where I could go. Safe and sound. Safe and sound, huh? My uncle told me that a tree is the safest place to be during a thunderstorm because it's tall and lightning strikes tall objects first. Even if lightning did strike this tree, you'd be far from safe. This tree could catch fire. Falling debris could hit you. You could even get electrocuted. In fact, some 2,000 people around the world get struck by lightning each year. Wow. Maybe I should try to get back to the clubhouse before that storm gets here. That sounds like a good idea. Looks like that's another myth broken. Well, we're going to take a brief commercial break, but when we come back, we're going to take a look inside one of the largest private weather forecasting companies in the world. Also, we'll investigate weather in outer space. But it's not what you might think. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Well, believe it or not, one of the largest private forecasting companies in the world is located here in the state of Pennsylvania. WeatherWatch was allowed exclusive access inside AccuWeather's headquarters to see how they forecast for clients all around the world. WeatherWatch reporter Colin Thomas has the story.
Let's face it, the weather plays a huge role in our day-to-day -day lives. And whether you're deciding if you should grab the umbrella on the way out the door, or if your weekend getaway will be sunny and warm, you have likely checked the work of a forecaster. Most times when you check your local forecast, you are reading the work of the National Weather Service, the government weather agency our tax dollars pay for. But there also exists a private sector of forecasting that tailors its products towards businesses, groups, and individuals. Here in Pennsylvania, we happen to have one of the nation's largest private forecasting companies right in our backyard. Founded in 1962, AccuWeather now serves some 175,000 clients with their forecasts reaching over 100 million viewers worldwide. With such a large and diverse audience, forecasters are continuously updating their products to ensure their clients get the best and most accurate weather information found anywhere. We spoke with Henry Margus City, Senior Meteorologist and Severe Weather Expert at AccuWeather. Henry delivers some of the most popular content on the AccuWeather website and has a strong following of thousands across his social media sites. Through his blog, Henry is able to focus on areas of interesting weather, highlighting potential areas of severe weather, snowstorms and other extremes. My job is, uh, as well as uh, directing the news, I also do the blogging, uh, video, and um, so in the mornings I got to juggle things quickly and do a lot, as well as get the news ready for AccuWeather.com, but then also get a blog ready and figure out all that and what I'm going to talk about uh, for uh, the blogosphere out there. And uh, really, what I try to do is try to hone in on the on the big stories. What are the big what are the big events coming? AccuWeather's products can be found almost anywhere. From television and radio to the web and social media, the reach of their forecasts can extend beyond the weather service's somewhat limited audience. This means incorporating the latest trends in web content and social media directly into their forecasts. I think social media is going to change the industry. I don't think we have adjusted to it yet. I think we're learning to adjust to it. In social media, things happen fast. So when incorrect information goes out, it goes out to everybody real quickly. And you have to be very, very careful about what's correct and what's incorrect information. But it's also, the positive side is helping us to get information out to everybody uh, very quickly. It's going to be a whole different ball game in the next five to ten years. As we head into the future, AccuWeather looks to continue its trend-setting business model for the private sector. In just the past year, AccuWeather products have become widely available on mobile phones and tablets. They have also unveiled a revolutionary 25-day forecast, the first of its kind to go public. Today, AccuWeather continues to be a reliable and accurate alternative source of weather information for the general public. For WeatherWatch, I'm student meteorologist Colin Thomas. Thank you, Colin. The sun is the main contributor to weather here on Earth. But in space, the sun drives a different kind of weather. Space weather is quickly becoming a very important field in science today, and it's important to understand the origins and dangers associated with it. Student meteorologist Courtney DeLong investigates. Anyone who has witnessed firsthand the aurora borealis or northern lights will tell you that they are one of the most beautiful displays in nature. But did you know that these lights are caused by a different form of weather? You could say that this weather is out of this world. Space weather is one of the fastest growing fields in science today. It's caused by the same forces that create the weather down on terra firma, the sun. Due to the fusion processes that occur within the core of our very own sun, massive amounts of energy are released in the form of electrically charged particles. These particles stream away from the sun at nearly 300 miles per second, forming what is known as the solar wind. The Earth's magnetic field normally protects us from these harmful particles by deflecting the majority of the solar winds. However, some solar wind does get by and streams down the magnetic field lines into the Earth's atmosphere. About 60 miles above the Earth's surface, these particles collide with air molecules and give off distinct colors. The results of these collisions create the famed northern lights. The normal patterns of space weather are not harmful to the everyday lives of people on Earth. However, sometimes the solar winds can go haywire. And when it does, it can cause catastrophic damage to the infrastructures built on Earth. The sun's magnetic field lines are constantly twisting and turning together. When these magnetic lines twist together, they can violently release, erupting enormous amounts of energy that move outward from the spot of explosion in what is called a coronal mass ejection. The coronal mass ejection, if strong enough, can act to peel away the Earth's magnetic field and expose important technology to the sun's harmful solar wind. 
global positioning satellites, power grids, and radio communication on Earth would all be disrupted. If the coronal mass ejection is severe, the electrically charged particles can flow through the power lines disrupting power grids, and in some cases, causing blackouts. Now imagine this. A large coronal mass ejection strikes the Earth. An airline pilot in the middle of a flight may lose all navigation abilities because the global positioning satellites are malfunctioning. Radio communication with air traffic control may stop due to the interference. Dangerous scenarios like these have private companies and government agencies scrambling to understand the forces that cause coronal mass ejections. Scientists at the Space Weather Prediction Center in Boulder, Colorado are studying space weather and are at the leading edge of the frontier of science. Space weather is a new and relatively unknown branch of science with explosive developments in technology and research as of late. The race is on to understand and be able to predict the next time our sun unleashes its fury on our very own planet. For Weather Watch, I'm student meteorologist Corny DeLong with this special report. Thanks, Courtney. Well, if you're interested in learning more about space weather, then there's good news. Millersville University's Earth Science Department will soon be offering a space weather minor. Well, that's it for this episode and debut season of Weather Watch. We will be bringing you a new season of Weather Watch in this upcoming September. To receive our updates and our videos, be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Twitter, and like our Facebook page. And of course, check out our website at the address listed below. I'm Matthew Moore, and I want to thank you for watching Weather Watch and making us a huge success. I speak for all of us here when I say thanks for watching.